Hello and welcome to PlayStation Grenade. Gran Turismo Sport is finally here. It's a landmark occasion, the first GT title on PS4. It's been four years since the last title, the wait has been difficult for many of us. And with many other driving sims on the market, it may be a tough choice to re-engage with the Gran Turismo brand. With that in mind, here are 12 things I think you should know about GT Sport. The only place we can start is by looking at the cars. Lots of cars, around 162 at launch with more arriving in bundles and special editions, each of which have been built from the ground up to match the real life counterparts. The brands you know and love are here such as Aston Martin, BMW and McLaren and even Porsche are getting in on the act this time around, debuting in Gran Turismo Sport. If you are a regular to the series, you'll notice that that is over 1,000 cars less than GT6, and if sheer volume of vehicles are your thing, you may be a little disappointed. GT Sport has decided to abandon the same vehicle with minute differences and instead allows you to micromanage the car, but we'll get to that very soon. The cars are broken down into six classes of vehicle, which are then broken down again into more subsets based on horsepower. The lowest level N series are basically stock production cars ranging from lowly N100 through to 1000 horsepower hypercars. The classes are continually broken down in this way, with race vehicles and supercars added along the way, until Group X is discovered which houses vehicles so damn sexy it should be illegal. This group consists of concept vehicles which don't always exist in the real world using future technology and design. So where will we be racing these buttes? Across 17 locations and 40 track layouts. These include the magnificent Nürburgring, Brands Hatch and Suzuka. Of course, brand spanking new tracks will be here and the return of some fan favourites too. The time of day can be modified by the gamer. Want to race at dawn or dusk? It's one click away. Sadly, this could be seen as a step back from GT5 and 6, which offered a dynamic weather cycle. Adapting on the fly was a fantastic feeling, and sadly it appears to be gone. This is most likely a frame rate decision, as a visual drop will pull gamers out of the moment and the feeling of immersion. It's a massive shame the dynamic weather is not here. The GT campaign returns to the series, but it's another huge departure from what we were used to. The dealerships where we could buy pre-owned vehicles and slowly build up to owning a full garage, or garage if you prefer, competing in races has been removed in favour of driving school, mission challenge and circuit experience. Driving school handles the basics of using a car, with mission challenge developing your skills in scenario based manoeuvres usually in real race conditions. Circuit experience is all about becoming familiarised with every inch of every track. Most of these game modes only utilise a tiny portion of each track, as simulation racing is all about trial and error, and finding the extra tenth of a second at each corner. So whereabouts did the traditional campaign mode go? Well I believe it has been replaced with the online focused sport mode. This is where GT Sport shines and is an absolute joy to play. As I'm speaking, I'm actually waiting for a race to begin. I can't fast track it, I have to wait for the official start time as do all the players in the race. While waiting, you can post a qualifying time so your place on the grid will be higher, but I personally like attempting to go from the back of the grid and seeing where I can finish. As your skills improve, setting a qualifying time will be needed to stand a chance in the race, which are extremely sweaty at times. As this is the main mode for GT Sport, you shall indeed need PS Plus to play and a constant internet connection, so keep that in mind. GT Sport also features a few online championships. A real legit trophy will be lifted at the end of both the Nations Cup and the Manufacturers Cup too. To clarify, the Nations Cup is all about the country you represent and the Manufacturers Cup is about the constructor. So if you really love your Aston Martin V12 Vantage GT, then you know who you should be representing. Let's make sure we double down on this next point. GT Sport is a simulator. It's a full simulation of real racing, so the arcadey elements are so minute that it will scare the pants off many people playing for the first time. Luckily, assistance is at hand, primarily the markers that help you line up your car at each corner. But the braking assist is a godsend at times. If like me you are terrible at driving, then be sure to keep the assists on, but when you feel like you can own the road, turn them off and be the expert you know you are. Lewis Hamilton, watch out fella. 
As mentioned earlier, the customization and tuning is where those tenths of a second can be found. Every single little element of the car, from suspension to tyres to engine tweaks, are here to be adapted and changed just like previous GT titles. It's dependent on the vehicle you want to tweak of course, as each vehicle has slightly different capabilities to manage. We all know the true way to get to the front of the race is to stand out from the crowd and change your aesthetics of your car, the colours and the decals. Here check out what PlayStation Access created using their time with the editor. We'll be able to upload our own images, so expect to be offended by people's artwork as they race past you. The photo mode Gran Turismo is famous for is here in sport, with a considerable step up in quality. The photo mode is called Scapes this time around, and has almost 1000 photo spots to choose from, many of which are from real locations. Many of us will love the ability to change the shutter speed and focal length in the pursuit for perfection, and then share it on social media and be the envy of your friends. My favourite part of recent GT titles is the rally option and I'm delighted to say it's back again. Sadly, it still isn't a large portion of the game, but I do think it's noteworthy. The handling is so different that it does feel like a separate game at times. Another piece of brilliance is the use of PSVR. A racing simulator is the perfect home for virtual reality, and it does not disappoint. Looking around for your opponent is surprisingly daunting, but to you drivers who can keep it on the road, it is a must try. Sadly and frustratingly, this will only be available as a one-on-one -on -one arcade mode extra, which will be soul destroying to some players. So that's it, GT Sport. The attention to detail is second to none, and the sport mode is close to perfection. Racing against other drivers is truly brilliant. Sadly, a few shortcomings are evident too, with less cars than usual, a cut down campaign, and a VR mode which isn't really part of the full experience. What do you think of GT Sport? Are you picking it up? I would love to know your thoughts. I'm Adam from PlayStation Grenade. It's been a pleasure. I'll see you next time.